Region of interest, or ROI analysis, is the backbone of neuroimaging research. It's used all the time in the papers you'll read, and it's good to know how to do it yourself. Simply put, ROI analysis focuses on a region or subset of voxels in the brain and ignores everything outside of that. Similar to how, when you're eating some delicious trail mix from Stop and Shop, you only focus on the M&Ms and you ignore everything else. But you don't eat too many because you don't want people to get suspicious. In this video, we'll be showing you some animations to build your understanding about what ROI analysis is, as well as how to do it in SPM. Think of an fMRI image as a big Rubik's cube of voxels. A first level analysis estimates a parameter or beta weight for each voxel in each condition in your experiment. And you get one of these big Rubik's cubes for each condition. Now let's go ahead and only focus on a two by two matrix of voxels in the precuneus over here. Let's call this the trail mix condition. Each voxel has a number representing a parameter estimate, the amount of brain activity in that voxel for that condition. If we take the average over the cubes, we've just done an ROI analysis for a single subject. You can do this for each ROI for each subject in your experiment and use those numbers for a t-test. One way to create an ROI is through an atlas such as the Destrio Atlas or Broadman's Areas. These atlases allow you to specify structure as an ROI, such as the anterior cingulate cortex, and extract data only from the voxels within that structure. Another popular method is to create a sphere within the brain centered on certain coordinates. These coordinates are usually based on the peak activation from another study. Let's take a look at how to do a spherical ROI analysis in SPM using the toolbox Mars Bar. Go ahead and select Mars Bar if you have it installed, and then select ROI definition and build from the options. Select type of ROI, a sphere, and then the center of the sphere in this example is going to be 0, 30, 30. And we'll select a radius of 5 millimeters. It's in the ACC, so we'll call it the ACC in both the description and the label. And save it as an ROI.mat file. Next, click on ROI definition, export, and export ROIs to image. We'll then select that ROI.mat image we created before, and then select space for ROI image. Select from image, and then go to your subject's directory. Let's pause here for a second. I'm assuming you've already run a second level analysis, and that for each condition for each subject, you've already created those Rubik's cubes I was talking about earlier. When you run a second level analysis, it creates a file called spm.mat, which has information about where each of those Rubik's cubes or contrast images are stored. It's an important file and we'll be using it later. In this example, I have only one contrast image per subject to keep it simple. The reason I'm selecting a subject's contrast image as my base space is because I want to make sure the ROI has the same size and dimensions as the contrast that went into my second level analysis. Otherwise, the ROI analysis won't work. Now go ahead, select the contrast image, and then click the dot to save that ROI to the current directory. Let's call it ACC, hit return, and then select Mars bar again so that we can visualize exactly where that ROI is. Click on ROI definition, view, and the ROI.mat file, and check to make sure that the ROI is in roughly the location where you think it should be. Now let's do this from the command line in SPM. In my second level directory, I have that spm.mat file I was just talking about. If you want to access the fields you need, type load spm, all capital letters. And then within that, you have spm.xy.p, which is a list of all the paths to all the contrast images we were talking about earlier. We also have in this directory our ACC ROI. We'll be using both the ROI and those paths to the contrast images to carry out our ROI analysis. The rest of these commands I'm typing out can be found in the blog in the link down below. Basically, it converts the ROI to a series of XYZ coordinates and then submits it, along with the paths to all the contrast images, to a command called SPM get data. I can then put this in a variable such as trail mix contrast and then submit that to MATLAB's t-test command. This will return the p-value for that ROI analysis, along with the t-statistic that you can report in your paper. That's ROI analysis in a nutshell. Stay tuned for smaller supplementary videos about how to do the same thing in AFNI and FSL. But in the meantime, I'm going to be enjoying some of this. Hey! Who took the M&Ms?
Okay, ending, take one. And that's ROI analysis in a nutshell. So stay tuned for more videos about how to do it in both AFNI and FSL. In the meantime, I'll be enjoying some of this. <laughs> hey, who took all the M&Ms? <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this. If only my parents could see me now. All right.